21-year-old Adam Guild initially built an app to help his mother's struggling dog grooming business. Fast forward a few years, and now the service, called Profit Boss, is a booming startup catching the interest of some high-profile investors. Profit Boss founder and CEO Adam Guild joins me now from San Francisco. Adam, it's it's great to have you on the show. Uh, talk a little bit about the genesis of, of Profit Boss and when you decided to go from helping your mom's dog grooming business to what you set out to do with Profit Boss. It's great to be here. The genesis of the company is very different from where we've ended up because initially I'd built the company to help my mom's dog grooming store get new customers, specifically to look for ways to not only drive her more website visitors, but then convert those website visitors into new customers. And when it really worked for her and I saw it build one of the most successful businesses in her area, the area that we're from in Los Angeles, I ended up taking that technology and looking for the best industries to apply it in. And the technology did conversion rate optimization on websites. And I ended up working with a restaurant by chance after trying to work with hundreds of different types of businesses and crushed it for the restaurant, then worked with a few restaurants, crushed it for them, then worked with a few more. And over the next two and a half years, using basically just revenue as our funding, we scaled to a company that was serving larger brands like P.F. Chang's, Amici's, Paisano's, Abercross Donors, Planta Fresh. But the issue that we ran into earlier this year was that our technology was specialized in driving in-store traffic for restaurants because that was the only profitable form of new customers that they could acquire since they were losing so much money on online orders, which we can get into in a moment. And so when coronavirus happened and locked down all of the restaurants in the area, our revenue overnight basically went from millions of dollars in contracts that we could count on and hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash hmm. flow to zero. And so we were forced to look for ways to adapt to try and save the business. So how did you adapt? We adapted by basically asking our restaurant customers, how can we be most helpful to you during this time? Because for the first time in human history, the restaurant industry changed from being a business fundamentally about in-store dining and in-store traffic to one that went almost entirely digital and online overnight, focused on takeout and delivery. And they told us that there was some massive problems that they were facing in their takeout and delivery businesses. The biggest problem that they were facing were that these services like DoorDash, Grubhub, Postmates, and Uber Eats charge between 20% and 30% of each transaction from the restaurants. Right. Side. It's a huge issue for restaurants. Exactly. It's a huge issue because net margins average 5% in the independent restaurant industry. That is, these large corporations like Burger King and Taco Bell can afford to negotiate their rates and actually make the economics work, but independent restaurants operating as sole proprietors cannot do those same negotiations and don't have the same leverage. And so they're forced to lose money on each transaction. And so that was the first problem we set out to solve. But the second problem is that restaurants also are not getting their customer data on each transaction. They're not getting even who the customer is, their last name, but they're also not getting their email address or phone number or order history. And so after the transaction, the restaurant has no way of building a relationship and ensuring that that customer understands the restaurant's story and orders from them frequently again. And so they're basically losing money on each transaction, but they're not even acquiring customers for it. So it's a lose-lose proposition. And that's what our technology sought out to solve and seems to be working really well so far. So where do consumers actually interact with Profit Boss technology? Or is this all in the back end and it's something that the restaurants are interacting with? That's exactly right. It is on the back end. The reason we named it Profit Boss, which is a name that appeals to restaurant owners, but not necessarily consumers, is because we want to power the infrastructure that handles the online ordering side of the business for the restaurant. So the way the consumers interact with it is they visit the restaurant's website and they click on the order now or order online button. And from that button, they're taken to a branded experience that has the restaurant's logo, the restaurant's name front and center. And our technology is just powering it behind the scenes, similar to the way Shopify powers Kylie Cosmetics and so many other massive e-commerce brands without actually the consumer knowing what Shopify is or who it is. It's not relevant to the consumer. So how do you get consumers to think first of visiting a, a, the website of the actual restaurant and not instead going to a third party like uh, you know uh, Seamless or, or, or DoorDash? Uh, or another one of those services that has signed on so many restaurants? That's an amazing question. Fortunately, because independent restaurant owners have such good reputations and such good relationships with their customers, and their customers genuinely want to see them succeed, their customers are eager to find ways to support local businesses during this time. And so restaurant owners are actually telling their customers actively by putting 
flyers in their to-go bags and by when they call in to ask questions saying, please order directly from us online on our website or by putting huge banners up in front of the restaurant saying, please order directly from us. This is the only way we can make this business work. If you want us to stay around for a long time and you want us to survive this pandemic, then the only way we can do it is if you order directly from us because that's the only way we can make these economics work. Otherwise, our business is going to continue losing money and we're not going to be around for long. Okay, so you're, you're 21 years old. You've raised uh, more than $3 million in, in your seed round led by some, some pretty big names. Um, Kimball Musk is in there, Elon Musk's brother, of course, uh, the Chainsmokers, uh, Tinder co-founder Sean Rad, in addition to some other folks. What advice would you, would you give people who want to go out and, and start a company and want to raise that, that first round of funding? That's an amazing question. The advice that I would give to people is... It is going to be extraordinarily difficult. Earlier this year, even, I thought that I was going to lose the business and lose my years of work because we hadn't raised money at that point or hadn't raised nearly enough money. And we basically lost all of the revenue that we thought we could count on that was funding the business because the world changed from in the restaurant industry being an industry about in-store dining to one entirely focused on takeout and delivery. And so in that incredibly desperate time when it looked like we had three or four months of cash left to make the business work and a bunch of other things went wrong in the company at this point, we had key people leave, we had to lay off a bunch of people. I basically, instead of feeling victimized by it, I forced myself to look for the opportunity in the situation and started to talk to as many restaurant owners as I could literally get on the phone, hundreds of them. And I asked them specifically, how can I be helpful to you during this time? Because I knew that they had to adapt their businesses, but more importantly, I had to adapt mine. And it was through carefully listening to the problems that they were describing and looking for ways to solve those problems that we ended up finding a business model that then absolutely took off to the point where we were getting hundreds of restaurants trying to sign up for it per week and still are to this day. And then when we went to talk to investors, because we had such a strong value proposition that was clearly generating hundreds of inbound leads a week and right. that hundreds of thousands of website visitors hitting our website and it's all such an important and timely problem that was impressive enough to investors to want to finance the business but i will admit that before it was incredibly difficult to raise funding i had tried and failed multiple times i want to go back a couple of years because again you're you're only 21 years old but you um you you end up dropping out of high school in 10th grade we hear a lot about entrepreneurs and ceos dropping out of college um why did you choose to leave school then and and was that the right move for you absolutely i chose to leave school then because honestly, I was really miserable in school. I felt really alone there. And like I had few people that shared my interests, but I was also getting bullied. And I was working on a different project at the time, this Minecraft server network. And it, it had basically become my entire life where even when I was at school, I was basically on my laptop doing server administration. And just to give you context on what that is, it's basically like building your own game within the game of Minecraft. And it sounds like really minor, but I happened to, at the time, run one of the largest ones that ended up reaching over 7 million users. And because the project was consuming so much of my life and because I was so miserable in school, I ended up deciding at that point that it wasn't for me because when I would go there, I would just get bullied and mocked and I would eat lunch alone every single day in the bathroom, like trying to hide from people and work on my server. And um, it just wasn't a good fit. I felt like I also wasn't getting value out of it because I feel that school basically just teaches us to regurgitate these random facts. I view it as this cruel game of trivia where immediately when we arrive, we're conditioned to obey the authorities, the teachers, and to memorize as many random facts as we possibly can so that we can advance to the next course or so that we can pass the test. Whereas we're not actually getting any utility or usefulness out of those random facts that we're memorizing. And so I figured that I, even though it was a really bold and risky move for my life and in many ways uh, has been terrifying at, at many points, I felt it was the right decision for me because I felt that memorizing random facts at school just wouldn't wouldn't be very helpful in the real world. Well, it, turns like, it certainly sounds like it was the right move and it's been an incredible journey. Um, Adam Guild, Profit Boss founder and CEO, 21 years old, raised more than $3 million for this startup. Best of luck on this moving forward. Founder and CEO of Profit Boss. Thanks for your time.